Hello and welcome everybody. My name is John Hobby. Welcome to The Great Poker Chip Adventure Season 2. Today we are talking about the Lucky Dragon cigarettes. No, I'm kidding. The Lucky Dragon poker chips. What am I saying? I don't know why I do that. drew that uh, comparison there. Maybe there really is a company in China or somewhere called the Lucky Dragon Cigarette Company. All right, let's uh, play a quick hand of Texas Hold'em here. That's my hand right there. Is it any good? Let's have a look. No, no, it's not good. But at least we know where we're at, right? <laughs> Burn a card. We'll flop here. These are the Jamaica pl plastic cards. I love these cards. 100% plastic. Yeah, there's nothing there for me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Tell us what you have. This is the... Oh, it paired the board. Oh, no. So all of a sudden, your flush might be trumped by a by quads or something. There's no telling. Either way, if you feel like it, tell us what you had in the comments. Now, <laughs> the Lucky Dragon poker chips. I got a whole bunch of to say about this. Where am I going to put these cards? I need to put them out of the way. All right. These chips, okay, poker chips. I ordered these from BR Pro Poker. I paid eh, less than $10 for this set. Little um, demonstration, not demonstration, a sample set right here. And that's something I would encourage all of you who may be interested in poker chips to do. Get a sample set before you order your main set. Now, uh, some quick things. We always talk about quality control. With any ceramic, uh, <laughs> I think my measurement of quality control, my standard, has increased. Meaning, not maybe increased, but I am beginning to think that I'm putting all, almost all ceramics into one category of average because across the board, so many of these ceramics are so similar, it's hard to differentiate them. I mean, they're just all so consistent. So for example, let's uh, consistent in different ways. Like let's talk about uh, centering, okay? Now quality control, you know, would if you, you know, <laughs> were to you know have perfect quality control there'd be no difference between this edge and this edge but if you look closely you'll see that this edge right here is thinner than this edge which means that the printing or dyeing process was slightly off center can you see that now well how does that compare to the rest of the ceramics it's exactly the same with the rest of the ceramics okay it's not a design feature they're not designed like that it just is when they're manufactured they're slightly off you can see an example right here the one the nevada jack one is kind of mostly centered. And then you look at this one and it's skewed way off to the bottom left. All right. So Nevada Jacks aren't perfect either. What about Tiki Kings? Surely the Tiki Kings <laughs> would have, you know, better quality control, but they don't. I'm not sure if either of these two are going to give us a good example of that, but these are also not perfectly centered. Trust me, I've been playing with them for a while. Here's a great example right here. Look how close the circle is to that edge. And then down here you have tons of space. Okay. So that, I mean, that one's not centered either. All right, so Tiki Kings are exactly the same. <laughs> all the others, I, I'm not going to show all of them, but I, I've rolled in before. The Nile Club um, have, you know, see how narrow this edge is right here and see how wide this edge is right here and right here. So it's skewed this way ever so slightly. Uh, I mean, it's just not. Ceramics just across the board have that, okay? Uh, what about the dimples? Well, all ceramics have dimples. These are no exception. <laughs> the, um, they're... They're very mellow on these. I mean, it's not a big deal. So uh, the dimples are just part of the manufacturing process. It's like these are made on parched trees or something. I'm not sure if this is going to show up. I was looking for one. Okay, so you can see right here, that little imperfection right there. That is just uh, part of the manufacturing process. Okay, how does that affect quality control? Well, it's really hard to feel and doesn't bother me. So, you know, moving on. Very average quality control. Now, uh, some other, you know... You can look at other things. You can look at printing. Some seem to have higher print quality than others. Just, you know, my experience. Now, uh, you know, we're jumping into the mainstream stuff now about weight, width, and thickness. Let's do weight really quick. Um, just remember that even like high-end casino chips will have variance in weight. They usually weigh, in my experience, between 9 and 10 grams. I have a little collection of them. And, you know, from the same casino, they can vary in weight, you know, almost a whole gram. So having a look at these, I'm just going to do this real time right here. 9.9 uh, .9 grams, 
10 grams. Let's make sure that zeroes out. And 9.8 grams. So when, do you guys remember in, in college when you were doing undergraduate research and you had those super sensitive scales with the acrylic housing around them? <laughs> I remember those. It's like, and I asked, why do they, why does it have this acrylic housing? And they're like, oh, because the airflow in the room will throw off the weight. I'm like, are you serious? They're that sensitive? I don't have anything that sensitive here. You know, you see 9.2 grams all the way up to 10 grams. So there is some variance there. Whatever. Anyway, you can see they're, they're all between 9 and 10 grams, leaning towards the 10 gram weight. Let's turn that off and let's move on to here. Digital calipers. Let's do thickness really quick. Let's see what we can show you guys here. Okay, zeroed out. This is the 25, 3.3, 3.27, almost 3.3. .3. 3.34, or 3.34, almost 3. So they're right around 3.3. My experience, um, these feel very much like the blanks they used for the Tiki Kings. And still zeroed. Um, and so, you know, I've had no problems with the Tiki Kings thickness. You make stacks of 20 of these, and there's no problem with that. Uh, the other thing that we always discuss is flatness. Flatness affect, affects how many you can stack. So if you can rock these back and forth, Wow, these do not rock. These are just rock solid. Wow, those are very flat. You could easily stack 100 of these with that kind of flatness. Um, what do I have to compare? Something I know that will be, all right, here we go. <laughs> this is not a fair comparison. Thank goodness it's not a fair comparison. Uh, these are the dice chips. Um, you can see how much they rock. You can see the gaps right here. These just rock massively. You'd have a hard time stacking these, you know, in any sort of reasonable fashion before they start falling over. Toppling over like the the Tower of the Gaza, no, the Pisa, the Tower of Pisa. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna plow on here with the discussion. Quality control is very average. Uh, back in the day, I would have said above average, but because you know there are so many high quality ceramic chips out there nowadays, I'm gonna say these are average. Just understand that I hold ceramics to the highest standards. So very, very across the board, what you expect when you get a good set of ceramics. Now design, oh dear, this opens up a whole can of worms, all right? Now, where should I start? Let's start with the big, big picture here. A lot of you will look at this dragon and say, hmm, that looks like an Asian design dragon, like an oriental dragon, right? You know, as designed, you know, and produced and made in the Orient. Now. Uh, I kind of see where you're coming from. That is, that doesn't look like a European dragon. I agree. Now, when you're talking about Asian design, though, that's a whole different game. With Asian design, it, um, design often is influenced a lot by the writing characters of that civilization. So, for example, European and what you know, the Western culture have very you know, not too busy, very kind of plain design aspects, all right? You look at cars, that's a great example. And then you move into um, Asian countries, and then you have a very complex design style, usually because of their like Hanzi, like Chinese characters, for example, the logograms they use in their written language. Um, those are very much um, replicated in their design. So you look at a, the front of a Chinese newspaper, or Google, Chinese newspaper, and look at the front page Okay, it is just a sea of these logograms, just a sea of their Chinese characters, and it's overwhelming for somebody like me coming from a Western culture. You're just like, holy smokes, uh, can people read that? That's just overwhelming. It's like when you look at you know, a 2,000 page book when you're like in elementary school and it's just all text. There's not even a, there's not a single diagram or picture in the whole book. You're just like, um, that's a little intimidating. You know, that's a lot of text. The same thing when you look at that kind of, you know, front page newspaper. And yet that carries over into their design. A lot of people, when I was in college, I don't know why I keep talking about my college days, but they would see Asian art and then they would be like, uh, it's just too busy for me. I don't want that in my house, right? We're talking about like art history classes, right? And you look at those and you just be like, wow, that is pretty busy. But now all of a sudden, okay, let's bring back, come back here to what we're talking about design. That dragon, yeah, kind of looks Asian, but these are very subdued. These look more like a Western culture design than an Asian design. Uh, so, you know, let's go back to this and um, let's compare. Okay. Let's compare to the Tiki's. Well, which one's more busy? 
The Tiki's are more busy. Huh, all right, well, that's interesting. Well, let's go to uh, Paulson Top Hat and Cane. Well, which one's more busy? Huh, the Top Hat and Cane. Oops. So what, what happened here, and something that I think is fascinating about this design, they put an Asian dragon on here, but this is a Western design. I doubt, I doubt strongly that the person who designed this is from mainland China or Japan or, you know, wherever, okay? I suspect they, they're probably a Westerner, born and raised, you know, somewhere in, in Western culture. Now, some other thoughts about this. Let's talk about some more about design real quick. There's kind of a lot. We need to fly through this. Um, so you're looking at what generally is considered kind of a radial pattern. Obviously, the number, the denomination right here. Notice there's no dollar sign or pound sign or euro sign, which is good. Until you get down to the cent, there's obviously the cent right there to differentiate that from the normal ones. But I like the denominations. Those and the dragon are kind of the center of focus right there. So you have this radial circle around here, which is a radial design. And then even the text is obviously, because they curved it like this, it is also a radial design. So what that does, um, yeah, some quick basics here about graphic design. Um, what the text does is the text points your eye and your attention to the center, okay? So these are all like little arrows that are pointing to the center, which makes you focus on that number in dragon. Very, very clean design. It would not surprise me like if this person has like a master's degree in graphic design, the person who designed this, because it's very specifically for a Western culture market and very specifically, you know, very you know, designed, you know, with very key features here. So I like that. Now, some other aspects just to be aware of. Notice how the dragon changes colors based on the background color, which is good. I like that. Um, I don't like the Venerati set because, you know, they used yellow even on, you know, on every single chip, these yellow little doily paisley things here. On every single chip, even the one, it's just yellow. Well, I, this needs to be blue or something because that just blends in and it makes the chip look kind of blah, you know? So I really like this design overall. Let's get this thing out of here. Okay. I've noticed something else that I jumped out at me is this 500. This this looks huge uh, because they use the same size font, text font right here, as they did on the single numbers, like five, 500. It's the same size, uh, basically. Maybe the five was a little bit bigger here, but it's a pretty large number set. And you compare that to the 1000, and this just jumps out at me, all right? Even the 5000. This 500 just jumps out. It's also because of the dark color. Anyway, I'm not good. <laughs> Needless to say, this stood out to me as a standout chip. Now, uh, some other things about design. Gosh, I can't believe how quick time flies here. We got so much to talk about. They did put the numbers on the edges. They're not aligned with the face. So you look at them, you know, the face, the numbers are in different places. The faces are not printed, you know, to be exactly lined up. This one's upside down. And, you know, let's talk about the blanks here for a second. I was grabbing some Tiki's here. These, um, as far as like the design of the hardware goes, these are very much like the Tiki Kings here. I suspect they're the same blanks, um, but both of these came from BR Pro Poker. They have that velvety smooth finish on them, okay? Uh, and so, you know, not a problem. I love the feel of these. These are great. Now for design, I'm going to say, you know, slightly above average, really happy with these. These know they're poker chips and they do a great job being a poker chip. They're not trying to be anything else other than a poker chip. I really like that. Uh, the lack of dollar sign or euro sign on here on the denominations is great. Super happy with that. Okay, now let's talk about materials. Ceramics. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Uh, they're a hard plastic. They're not really ceramic. We've been through this discussion before. They are very comparable to any other ceramic when it comes to materials. That includes durability. So for design, you know, slightly above average for materials and durability across the board, average. Now we need to dive into this discussion about um, competitive options, sound tests. Oh, I might as well do it now. Um, these ceramics shuffle like butter, just like the Tiki's, right? I mean, even left-handed, they're super easy to shuffle. I know some chips like Paulson's and stuff, you have to kind of break in and get used to. These, uh, right out of the box, just lovely. Uh, you know, just as easily, you know, shuffle the, the Tiki Kings, right? Lovely, lovely ceramics, uh, smooth edges, velvety feel. They just um, come right together. Now, uh, let's do competitive options here first, then we're gonna do a sound test. Uh, if you're looking for ceramics, well, let, 
yeah, if, let's just <laughs> stick with ceramics, okay? You have a wealth of options. Um, let's roll some in here. If you have any questions about these, um, write a comment. If I don't get around to answering it, I'm sure somebody else will. There's a lot of knowledgeable people out in the poker chip community that will be watching this who know way more about poker chips and stuff than I do. All right. Um, so here's kind of some comparisons. Uh, as far as price goes, I just bought the sample set. You'd have to really go to BR Pro Poker and check on the price yourself. If you can't be bothered, <laughs> leave a comment and maybe somebody will give you the current prices or just read the description. Uh, I'll put, when I publish this video, I'll put the current prices in the description. It changes so much, my goodness. Um, the sample set was under $10, like I said, so very reasonable. So some of the higher end ones, obviously the Tiki King, the Nevada Jack. Um, you get down to some less expensive ones. The Laurel Crown, the Crown Laurel, the Venerati were a little less expensive. Um, at the When I purchased them, the Nile Club and the Scrolls were some of the least expensive ceramics out there. Get a set of 300 for around $120. Not sure if that's changed. Uh, my guess is they're still pretty affordable. Um, the Nile Club, um, have a smooth finish, like super smooth, almost being slick. The Nevada Jack and Scroll have kind of a, uh, I almost want to call it a checkering. It's a pretty aggressive texture, which, you know, I kind of like. I mean, it's different. Some people may or may not like that. Uh, it depends on your opinion. You might want to get a sample of Scrolls just to check them out. Uh, the, the rest of them have, oh, sorry, take that back. The Crown Laurel also have that really aggressive checkering kind of like the scrolls, really aggressive compared to the velvety smooth of some other chips. Uh, it's not like, you know, yeah, it's not it's super aggressive, but for, for a ceramic, it's it's more aggressive, I should say. Now the velvety smooth ceramics, you know, the Venerati are pretty smooth. The Tiki Kings and the, you know, Lucky Dragon feel, you know, have that, that matte velvety smoothness to it. And let's dive into our sound test straight away here. Okay, we need some low-end first. This is comparing the Lucky Dragons to some low-end chips. These are metal insert chips. This is the Dice chip, ABS chip, available all over. This is the new bicycle metal insert chip. And the ceramic, um, these, so obviously the ceramics do not have a metal insert. These both do have a metal insert. These weigh about 11 grams. All right. Hope that helps somebody out there. Um, let's move into some other introductory level chips. So these are some less expensive chips. Well, I thought you're probably going to be looking around $100 for a set of $300, uh, anywhere from like $60 up to like $100. Uh, let's see, we have some Next Gen Pro Gen, which I really like. No metal inserts here. These are metal insert and coin inlay, so a very heavy chip. Uh, let's throw, what else can we use to represent? metal insert chips. Let's throw in some of those. Okay, I think that will do the trick for right now. All right, so we're comparing, these are all metal insert chips except for the next gen, which are not a metal insert chip. Claysmith Desert Heat. Monte Carlo. Let's do a coin inlay. And finally, next gen. Um, generally, people describe the ceramics as having a brighter sound because they are a harder plastic. Um, let's roll into some China clay mid range. Uh, let's re roll all the ceramics back in. I should have done the sound test with all the ceramics in here. Either way, we'll just throw in a whole bunch of chips here and sound off. Well, let's use the Majestics to represent China Clays. Obviously, there are Milanos, Pharaohs, various other China Clays. We're just going to use that to represent them today, mostly because I'm looking around and I didn't bring any. <laughs> I didn't bring any over. We already have Nile Club. Do we have Tiki Kings? No, we do not. We'll throw those in. Um, should we do some Paulsons for kicks and giggles? They stopped producing these, but just for sound comparison reasons, we're going to throw those in. And let's see, I have more Nile Club, Nevada Jack, we already have. All right, let's roll with this. Lucky Dragons here. Those are the scroll. 
Nile Club sound a little bit brighter. Tiki King sound almost identical. Yeah, Venerati sound pretty similar too, don't they? China Clay sound much softer, don't they? All right, and finally Paulson. I'm doing this because in the future they may have Paulsons available. Available to the public as a consumer grade chip. All right, so where do I stand with the Lucky Dragon? How do I feel about these chips? Do I like these chips? Uh, surprisingly, yes, I really like them. I like them because of the simplicity of the design. Uh, when you're talking about my personality. The Tiki Kings really capture that, okay? So just happy, goofy, almost childish, right? It's like you have a you have a smiley face right here. Makes me happy, all right? Bright colors, makes me happy. You know, you compare like the thousand they chose to go with a yellow. Here we have bright orange. Uh, like the one is very similar to the 5,000. That's something to be aware of. That may affect somebody's purchase decision. It wouldn't affect mine so much. I would prefer it if it were orange, bright, happy color or something. Uh, the purple isn't quite as deep as the Tiki King purple. Just, you know, little things. The 25s aren't quite as deep. They're a little bit brighter. But, you know, I like the big, bold, bright colors of the Tiki Kings. So come and so to me, this is the the uh, Lucky Dragons have a nice middle-of-the-ground usefulness to them. For, for a poker chip, they're extremely, extremely useful. I could easily recommend these to anybody. Uh, on the other end, other end uh, there's the Nevada Jack. Okay, this is also kind of a busy chip, but this, you know, this is a skull smoking a stogie, all right? This is not like your childish Tiki King happy, but it's still, these still make me happy, right? And I still love these chips. So, you know, you know, if you're talking about like, if you consider, and maybe it's, maybe not, maybe you could even say, let's throw in a scroll poker chip. So scrolls are pretty serious, right? Like we're going to be a serious poker chip, right and then they're thrown in this design that looks pretty serious you know there's no frills there's no fun there uh, the lucky dragons are like a good in between they're not as serious as like a scroll or they're not like as serious as far as like subject matter of smoking a stogie with us using a skull and crossbone with a dead man's hand which some kids may not understand and they're not you know childish like the tiki king so i'm not calling the tiki kings childish i'm just making you know i'm exaggerating a little bit here to show the placement of the lucky dragons right in the middle these are smack dab in the middle interesting useful poker chips you throw that out there you know it's like oh it's a 500 i get it it's a poker chip it does its job excellent excellent as far as i'm concerned you know the quality control the design the materials the durability all come together to make a very reasonable chip that i think you know maybe a lot of people are ignoring and this is one of the ones that i really like i only roll in poker chip sets that i like so, I know, you know, I like this. Would I choose this over the Tiki Kings? No, because it's not my personality. Would I choose this over the scroll? Yes, definitely. And again, it comes back to Nevada Jack. It just depends on my mood. Even during a day, I'd flip back and forth. I would say Nevada Jack and Lucky Dragon are very similar. Um, go to BR Pro Poker. Check out some of their lovely stock designs that they have available to you. And if you feel like it, order a sample set and tell us what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Lucky Dragon cigarettes. I mean, the poker chips. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.